How many of these terms do you know? Anchor stitch, applique, column stitch, density, fill, jump stitch, motif, outline, running stitch, short stitches, satin stitch, step satin, step pattern, underlay. The anchor stitch is a holding stitch that's used to anchor a design in place and is generally used with applique. Applique is a French term, that's why the E at the end sounds like a long A, and it's for stitching an outline design with fabric that's applied on top of another fabric. If you look at the cute little dinosaur design here, this is an applique because it's a fabric fill instead of a stitch fill, but he still has a stitched outline and a little face design. A column stitch is a satin stitch that's used for outlining. It can also be used to fill in fonts when doing lettering. Okay, here it is, density. Density refers to the number of stitches per inch, and it can be impacted by the stitch width, the stitch length, the type of thread you use, even the type of fabric you use, or the type of design. And it's also impacted by your own personal preference. So take a look at the picture to the right. You can see three rows of stitching. They're all similar. It's all sort of a zigzag design. But which row of stitching has the greatest density? It's the one on the left, of course. The stitches are tightly um, stitched together here. The one on the far right has a lot more space between the stitches. So you want to have a nice balance between um, the tightness of the stitches and the space between the stitches. You don't want your fabric to show through the back. Um, if it does, that's a sign that there's not enough density in your design. So a fill stitch is any stitch other than a satin stitch that's used to fill in an open area in an embroidered design. An auto punch has hundreds of fill options from the step satin to the motif designs to the step pattern designs. Check out the catalogs and try some out. A jump stitch, as opposed to a running stitch, is a loose thread that appears when your machine jumps from one block to another in stitching out a design. Jump stitches are normally clipped once you're finished with your design, um, unless they're just too close together that you can't get your little scissors in there and clip them. But um, you don't have to worry about clipping them because Auto Punch knots your thread before jumping onto the next block. Now take a look at this picture. You can see some threads um, here in between different spaces in the design. So look at it and see if you can tell me are these jumps or running stitches. Well, it's sort of hard to tell. And sometimes when you look at a design, what looks like a running stitch is actually a jump. So you have to be really careful. You don't want to have to clip out a whole row of stitches at the end of your design. Motif is a French word for pattern. And Auto Punch has hundreds of motif patterns to select from, especially when you're creating freestanding lace designs. Um, to the right, you can see the catalog for motifs. After you've made your selection, you want to adjust the parameters so that the motif will fill the entire space completely. Um, you may have to tweak it several times until you're satisfied with the result. An outline stitch is a running stitch or a satin stitch around the perimeter of a design. In applique, the satin is the most common outline stitch, but a running stitch outline is also an option in something like a shabby design. A running stitch outline is useful in the first block of applique or as an underlay for satin stitching as we'll see in the next slide. 
an outline stitch, stitch is a runner stitch, the same thing or as a satin stitch, stitch around the perimeter it's the of the same design. sort of stitch. An applique it's a line of satin stitches. is the most common and outline stitch. And it looks stitch. just like stitching but a on a, stitch a regular is also machine an as opposed to an embroidery like machine. A shabby design. Um, it's used to a outline or define the perimeter of an applique. But a running stitch is also an option that you have between blocks when you're digitizing. You can choose to have a running stitch or a jump stitch. And it's all up to you. It depends on the design that you're working with. Um, most often I choose a jump stitch, but there can be times when you prefer to have a running stitch, especially if there's going to be some other stitching um, that covers it up in the final design. A running stitch is almost the same thing as an outline stitch. It's the same sort of stitch. It's a line of single stitches and it looks just like stitching on a, a regular machine as opposed to an embroidery machine. Um, it's used to outline or define the perimeter of an applique, but a running stitch is also an option that you have between blocks when you're digitizing. You can choose to have a running stitch or a jump stitch, and it's all up to you. It depends on the design that you're working with. Um, most often I choose a jump stitch, but there can be times when you prefer to have a running stitch, especially if there's going to be some other stitching um, that covers it up in the final design. So short stitches are very important when you're digitizing in small areas. Auto Punch has an option to fill in these narrow spaces with short stitches, which helps to avoid puckering and gaps. Um, when you're digitizing an embroidery design, especially like this little mermaid here, um, you want to check this option if there are lots of angles and there are tiny um, little spaces. Um, if you look at her hair here, especially the ends of her hair, right where it curls, um, this would be a place where you'd want short stitches. Also, in her face, around the hairline, there are a few other places that a short stitch might come in handy. But if you look at the leaves, the seaweed or whatever it is in the picture, that's a satin stitch. That's a little different from a short stitch. But short stitches help to fill in a tiny area and stitch closer to the outline stitch or the edge of a design. A satin stitch is probably one of the ones you see most often, especially if you do monograms or lettering. It's the smooth and uniform row of stitches that's used to fill in letters or columns. And it's often seen in an outline or on a um, filled design or an applique border. Step satin stitches are fill stitches that are variegated, and so they're not in a straight line. If you look at the honeycomb with this little bee, um, you can see some step satin stitches, um, and they, they give a little texture to the design. There are many step stitches um, that you can choose from for fills, so take a look at the different ones that are there and experiment with some. See what kinds of textures and interest you can create in your digitized designs. Step pattern is a step satin stitch that repeats itself in a pattern. You can set the angle of the pattern. And um, if you look at the little duck here, you can see that I've digitized this one with a step pattern that looks like faux smocking. Did you know you could do that with Auto Punch? Explore your catalog of pattern fills in Auto Punch. There are about a hundred of them to choose from. Step pattern is a step satin stitch that repeats itself in a pattern. You can set the angle of the pattern. And um, if you look at the little duck here, you can see that I've digitized this one with a step pattern that looks like faux smocking. Did you know you can? So underlay stitches are a sort of zigzag fill that um, goes underneath your embroidery design. And it's there to give support to your design to help it stitch out flat and neat and keep it from puckering. And there are three types of underlay. There's a central underlay that you can use when you have a fairly small area. There's a fill underlay that you would use for a larger design. And there's an edge walk underlay that might be more appropriate when you have lettering or perhaps an applique. 
But freestanding lace is something that should never have an underlay, only an outline. So underlay stitches are a sort of zigzag fill that um, goes underneath your embroidery design. And it's there to give support to your design to help it stitch out flat and neat and keep it from puckering. And there are three types of underlay. There's a central underlay that you can use when you have a fairly small area. There's a fill underlay that you would use for a larger design. And there's an edge walk underlay that might be more appropriate when you have lettering or perhaps an applique. But freestanding lace is something that should never have an underlay, only an outline. I'm hoping that now you're a little more familiar with some of the terms that you've been hearing us talk about in previous lessons. And so for your assignment this week, I want you to experiment with some of these terms. Um, take density, for example. Go in and change the density of a design and see what happens to the design. Experiment with some short stitches. Check and uncheck the box when you're digitizing and see the difference. Um, select some new step patterns or motif fills. Uh, try out all of these things and then share your findings with the group. We need to get some good discussion going as people start sharing what's happening.